So we did a recent video on taking unstructured text output from a language model and turning that into a structured representation, for example, a Pydantic model class or a JSON schema. Now that video used the Llama Index LLM framework, but sometimes you need a smaller, more concise package for this particular task and you don't want to introduce tools like Llama Index or Langchain. And the most popular dedicated tool for this structured output task is this one here, it's called Instructor. And if we scroll down here, we can see that Instructor is the most popular Python library for extracting structured data from LLMs. And it's got over 3 million monthly downloads, 11,000 stars on GitHub, and over 100 contributors. And it's built on top of Pydantic, so it provides that type-safe data extraction and validation from the responses generated by an LLM. So let's see this in action before we get started. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page linked just below the video and consider becoming a member of the channel if you're enjoying this content and don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's get started. What we're gonna do here is start by looking at some of the key features that's provided by Instructor. And this is all centered around structured outputs so we can define Pydantic models to specify exactly what data we want from the LLM. So rather than just getting unstructured text as a response, we can actually turn that into a structured representation, which is very useful for other applications. And we can extract specific pieces of information much more easily. Now this library also has automatic retries built in, and it has some useful data validation built on top of Pydantic and some other things here. This is quite a good one as well, multi-provider support. So it's gonna work with OpenAI, but also a bunch of other models and a bunch of other applications. And there is a universal provider API. So no matter what model you're using, you can call this instructor.fromprovider and you can provide any model here, for example, GPT-4 or Claude-3 and so on. And then once you have the client, it's the same interface to get that extraction performed into a structured Pydantic model. So you don't need to mess around with different APIs. This provides a unified interface for getting that structured data. And the final thing I want to cover very briefly, and we covered this in the last video, is why use Instructor. So we can look here at the pain of unstructured outputs. When we get back data from a model, it's often in this format here, it's just raw text. And you need to then parse that text and also handle any kind of exceptions and validation errors. On the other hand, if you use Instructor, what you can do is define a model class, a Pydantic base model subclass. And then you can provide that response model when you call the chat.completions.create method. And the data you're gonna get back is gonna be in the form of this Pydantic model. And you can then extract specific pieces of information, for example, user.name. And that's much more useful than trying to do that with the raw text that we see above. Now I'll leave a link in the comments to the previous video we did on structured outputs where we go into this in more detail. But I want to now get started with the problem that we're gonna try and solve in this video. We're gonna see a practical example of Instructor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this PDF which represents an invoice and it's the same one we used in the previous video. And we're gonna define a Pydantic model with the data we want to extract from this PDF. So for example, we might want to extract this invoice number that you can see here. So we're gonna have a field on the model for that and any other pieces of data such as total due, we're gonna define that model in a second. So the idea here is to take all of this PDF and extract specific pieces of information and we're gonna use Instructor to do so. Now to begin with, we need to actually get the PDF text into our Python application. To do that, we're gonna use this package called PyPDF. And this is an open source package that's capable of splitting, merging, cropping, and transforming the pages of PDFs. We're gonna use it in a very simple way to actually just read the content of the PDF into the program. To start with, we need to install this package. We're gonna use UV in this video, but it's gonna be a similar command here. We're gonna install PyPDF. Let's go to VS Code, and I'm gonna run UV add PyPDF. That's gonna add this to the environment that I've already created with UV. And once that's installed, we can start using the package. Now, if we look at main.py here, I want to just look at the top two lines. We're using the python.env package here to load the open API key from the .env. So let's have a look at that file just now. And you can see we've defined the open AI API key. And I've set that to a value that's hidden here, but you can set that to the API key that you can get from open AI. And if you're using another model, for example, Claude, you can set that to the relevant API key. Now let's go back to main.py and we're gonna start by reading in the PDF. And you can see we have a data folder here and I've got a sample invoice.pdf. That's what we're gonna read in, so let's do that just now. If we go back to the PyPDF documentation, we're gonna look at how to extract text from a PDF. So what we do here, and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see it, we import the PDF reader and we provide a path to our PDF. So we're gonna instantiate that and then we can read the pages as you can see here. So let's go back to our application and at the top here, I'm going to import the PDF reader. 
And then we can instantiate that and create a reader object by instantiating PDF reader and passing a path to the data slash sample invoice.pdf file. So that creates the reader object. And then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over each page in reader.pages. And what we can do to start with is print page.extract text. That's a function. And we're going to call that function and extract the text for each page in the PDF. Now let's go back to the terminal here and we're going to write uv run main.py and see if this is working. And hopefully we can see some text and we do so. Now what I'm going to do is create a function to read in this PDF and append the text from each page to a variable and then return that from the function. So just above what we've written here, I'm going to define the function. It's going to be called PDF to text and it's going to take a file path. And then we're going to create a variable that's initially an empty string. And for each page in the PDF, we're going to extract the text from that page. And we're going to make sure we have text. And then if we do, we're going to append that to all text with a new line. And then finally, we return all text and we strip any white space from the start and the end of that text. So essentially, we've taken the entire text content of the PDF in each page and we've appended that to a single variable that we're returning from the function. And now what we're going to do is define some text here by calling this function and we're going to pass in the file path, which was data slash sample invoice dot PDF. And let's print this out and make sure it's still working. So if we go to the bottom here, we're going to run uv run main.py and we can still see the text, but now we've stored it in a variable that we can then pass to instructor and pass to these completion models. And that's what we're going to work on next. So with this text in place, what we can do now is go back to the terminal and we're going to run uv add instructor to actually install this package into the environment. And that is also going to install a bunch of other packages, as you can see here. These are dependencies of Instructor, for example, OpenAI, and also Pydantic as well. Now, OpenAI, as you can see here, is included by default. If we go back to the installation section of the documentation, if you want to use a specific provider, what you can do is add the provider after Instructor. For example, Instructor Anthropic or Instructor Google Gen AI, and many more here as well. So now that Instructor is installed, what we can do is start defining the Pydantic model class for the structured data we want to extract from this PDF file. So we're going to create a class and we're going to start by defining what we want here. We're going to want the vendor, which is going to be this demo sliced invoices. That's who's sending the invoice, as you can see in the from section. So let's just start with that just now. Let's go back to VS Code and we're going to minimize this terminal and go to the top here. Now to define the model from Pydantic, we need to import the base model class. And once that's imported, I'm going to go just below the dot env section here and we can define a class called invoice data. That's going to be a subclass of this base model. Now the vendor that we saw there is just going to be a string. So we can define the name of the field vendor and also the data type here. That's the way that Pydantic works. We have this type safety built in. Now what else might we want to extract? We have an invoice date and a due date here. So we're going to define these. Now these are strings in the PDF obviously, but we want to convert these to Python date time objects. We can also do that using Pydantic's validation. So if I define an invoice date field on the model, that is going to be an instance of date time. And we can do the same for the due date as well. Now for this to work, I'm going to go to the top here and we do need to import the date time object. And that's just from Python's date time module. We're going to import date time and then we can use that type here in the Pydantic class. What else can we extract from the PDF? Let's go back to the page here. Now we're going to get two more pieces of information from the PDF. The invoice number, which as you can see is not just a number. So we're going to define that as a string and also the total due, which we're going to define as a floating point number. So let's go back to our Pydantic class and we're going to define the invoice number first of all here. That's going to be a string. And finally, the total due is going to be a float. Now at this point, we've defined the structure of the data we want to extract from this PDF. We can now bring Instructor into the equation. Now let's check out the simple example in the Instructor documentation. You can see that once they define the class here, what you can do is you can call instructor.fromOpenAI and then you pass an OpenAI client instance into that method and you can see that's imported from the Python OpenAI package. So you instantiate the client and then you pass that into from OpenAI and then you can use this client to call the .chat.completions.create method and you pass the model name that you want to use and you also pass the response model that you've defined, in this case, this model here. Alongside the messages, so you can provide a role here, alongside the all important content that you want to extract the information from. In our case, that's the text content that we extracted from this PDF and we now have this in a variable on line 31. So let's go to the top of the file and what we're going to do to start with is bring in these two imports. 
So let's copy these and go back to VS Code. And I'm going to bring these in at the top. We're importing the instructor package and also the OpenAI client. And what we can do now is go to the bottom underneath where we have this text. And we're going to create a client variable here by calling instructor.fromOpenAI. And as we saw, we just need to instantiate the OpenAI object in order to get this working. Now, it's important to note that in order to get this working, you do need to have load.env here or some other way of getting this OpenAI API key into your environment. But assuming that you do have that, you can now proceed with this client. So let's go back to the documentation here. And you can see the method that's being called. I'm going to copy this. This is what we actually use to extract the structured data. So once we have the client, we can amend what we have here. So we're not going to get back a person. Instead, it's going to be invoice data from this method here. And the response model is not going to be person. It's going to be the invoice data that we defined above. That was the pydantic subclass that we had. So we're going to pass that in as response model to client.chat.completions.create. And finally, we need to amend the messages that are passed into the create method. So we have a role of user. We can keep that as it is. That is telling the model that this is input from the person that's actually using the model. In other words, the user. But we are going to change the content that we want to extract the structured data from. And we're going to set that to the text that we have from the PDF on line 33. Now, once we get the response from OpenAI's model over the API, this invoice data object that we have here should actually be an instance of the invoice data pydantic subclass that we have. So we're going to test for that at the bottom. So what we can do here is we can print out the invoice data object to the terminal. Now to print that object out in a nicely formatted way, I'm going to go to the pydantic documentation here. And there's a package called Python DevTools, and this provides a number of useful tools during Python development. And one thing it provides is this debug function here. That is an alternative to the print function. And that is going to format the output in a way that should be easier to read than the print function. So let's go back to VS Code and we're going to run UV add dev tools. That's going to install that and then we can use that debug function inside our application. So let's go to the top. And the final import for this video, I think, is from dev tools. We're going to import debug and then we can call debug and pass this invoice data model into the function. So let's do that just now. And once we've done that, let's go to the terminal and let's run this application. So it's going to be UV run main.py. And if we have everything set up correctly, this is going to take the data from the PDF. It's going to call the language model on the back end. In this case, it's going to be an open AI model. And that model is going to take the data and also the response model that's expected. And ultimately, when that process completes, it's going to return not unstructured text, but instead a structured pydantic model class, as we can see here. And if we look at the data here, we can see, for example, the invoice date and the due date have been converted to date time objects in Python. And the invoice date is the 25th of January 2016, and the 31st is the due date. If we go back to the PDF itself, you can see that that is correct, 25th of January and also 31st of January. So it's correctly extracted that information and it's stored it in fields on the Pydantic model. And the invoice number of INV3337 has been extracted as well, and a total of $93.50. And that matches what you can see here and here. Now the vendor has been extracted and it's set to test business. I guess there's a bit of ambiguity here. Is the vendor demo sliced invoices or test business? But that's something that you can verify when you test these kind of structured outputs. And it does highlight that these do need validation, these do need testing before they can be rolled out into production. But overall, this has done a great job of capturing the structured outputs that we needed here based on the fields that we defined in the Pydantic model. Now, because we've got a model back, this is very useful for downstream applications because what we can do is then just take that model, invoice data, and we can access specific fields on the model. For example, if we needed the due date, we could access that field and that's going to give us back that specific piece of information much easier than extracting that from the raw text itself. So having data in these structured formats is really useful for downstream applications. They can then consume that data very easily. They can store the data in databases and make decisions about the data and so on. Unstructured text, on the other hand, which is the normal response from a language model, is much harder to extract that data from. So that's the big benefit of structured outputs with Pydantic models and Instructor. And you can see how easy it is to get a client back here from one of the vendors, for example, OpenAI. And then you have this unified interface here for actually querying the model and getting back responses in a structured format based on this response model class. Now you can increase the robustness of this by using Pydantic's built-in validation. So if we go to this page here, I'm gonna scroll down to the validation section 
and you can use normal pedantic validation, for example, the field validator decorator. And what's gonna happen then is that if the validation fails, the instructor module is going to then make the LLM retry in that case until you get a valid response. And note as well that Instructor works well with complex models, including nested data. So this is really useful for taking the responses from a language model and then converting that into complex but structured data that can then again be used in downstream applications. So that is all for this video. In this video, we've covered the Instructor module and we've seen how to use that with OpenAI in order to get back a structured response from a language model instead of just raw text. And we saw how to read in data from a PDF and pass that text data into the model and get back the structured class, as you can see at the bottom, that then contains specific pieces of information and it's very easy to access those individual pieces of information. And that is the big benefit of structured outputs. And if you want to see any similar videos to this on the channel, let me know in the comments. And I'll also leave a link to that Llama Index video we did on this topic just below the video. Now, if you found this content useful and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page that's linked below the video and consider becoming a member if you've not already done so. It would be greatly appreciated. And thanks to everyone who has joined the channel since we opened memberships. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And we'll see you in the next video.